So hello and welcome to my presentation. My name is Abdullah Jabr and I'm a PhD student at the Montana University at Leoben in Austria. So today I'm going to be speaking about contact damage behavior of alumina-based layered ceramics with pyrrhid microstructures. So ceramics are well known for their outstanding mechanical properties, which make them ideal materials for advanced applications. However, in many structural applications, they are subjected to contact loading. Typical examples are shown here such as ceramic cutting tools, ceramic bearings as used in wheel bearings or in hip joint implants, or ceramic rolls for the metal forming industry. So why are we interested in studying contact damage? Well, this is because of its importance, as about 30 to 50% of ceramic failure cases were found to be related to contact damage. The typical damage pattern under blunt contacts is the Hertzian contact cracking, which appears on the surface as a ring crack and in the subsurface as a cone crack. Such crack formation is very critical as it acts as an initiating center for catastrophic failure. So how can we improve contact damage tolerance of ceramics? One of the strategies used in the literature is to tailor the microstructure to shift the damage from concentrated macroscopic cone cracking to a distributed subsurface microcracking. This can be done by introducing weak interfaces, for example, by the addition of second phase particles such as whiskers or nanoparticles. Also increasing the grain size and the amount of porosity will give the same effect. This strategy can indeed enhance contact damage tolerance, however this comes at the cost of wear resistance. Here I mean wear resistance in terms of cyclic fatigue. Another strategy is to use compressive residual stresses to shield the cracks. This is typically used in strengthened glass where compressive residual stresses can be induced by an ion exchange process. This, is, this strategy is used for the production of uh, scratch-resistant glass for displays and screens and has been commercially realized by the company Corning for the, under the name Gorilla Glass. So this was the case for glass, but how can we induce residual stresses in ceramics? This can be done by co-sintering two strongly bonded dissimilar materials with differential thermal expansion coefficients. The schematic here shows two materials strongly bonded and sintered together. The blue material has a larger thermal expansion coefficient. So upon cooling down to room temperature, the blue material will exhibit larger shrinkage, but since both materials are strongly bonded, the shrinkage is constrained. So tensile residual stresses in the blue layers and compressive residual stresses in the yellow layers will be induced. The magnitude of these residual stresses can be analytically estimated using these equations. The important thing here is that the residual stress in each layer depends on the ratio between the total volume of each material and not on the individual layer thicknesses. So now we have compressive layers that can be designed either on the surface or embedded in the structure. A surface layer design gives mechanical resistance where crack formation is to be avoided. But once damage is initiated, failure will occur. On the other hand, embedding compressive layers will lead to damage tolerance. Here the material tolerates the presence of defects by arresting crack propagation at the internal layers. This has been shown in previous works on the example of thermal shock tests. In this work, we used the damage tolerance approach. So in addition to compressive residual stresses, we also tailored the microstructure by taking inspiration from the mollusk shell. The mollusk shell shows exceptional strength and toughness despite being made of 95% calcium carbonate, which is basically a brittle material. The reason for the strength and toughness of the mollusk shell was found to be related to its hierarchical architecture, which consists of calcium carbonate platelets arranged in a brick and mortar structure. So you can imagine for a crack that wants to propagate through the material, it has to find its way through all of these interfaces. We replicated this structure by texturing the microstructure using templated grain growth. Previous works has dem have demonstrated the ability of this microstructure to deflect propagating cracks along the boundaries of elongated grains, resulting in an enhanced toughness. So in our materials, we used both strategies, and by an appropriate design of the layer's thickness, we managed to reduce tensile residual stresses to 50 MPa and achieve compressive residual stresses of 250 MPa. In addition, the microstructure of the internal compressive layers was also textured. So the basic idea is to enhance contact damage tolerance using internal protective layers that are both textured and hold compressive residual stresses. 
So the aim of this work is to investigate the effect of texturing on the nature of contact damage and also to evaluate the performance of layered alumina under contact loading. So let's start with the materials of study. First, we have equiaxed alumina, which represents a conventional polycrystalline ceramic. Then we have textured alumina with the elongated grains. With this material, we can investigate the effect of texturing on the contact damage response. And finally, we have layered alumina, which is a combination of both materials with residual stresses. For the methodology, we used spherical indentation since it gives a close representation of contact loading conditions expected in real-life applications. The balls we used had a diameter of 4 mm. We also equipped the test setup with acoustic emission sensors to monitor the material's response during the tests. So when a crack propagates, acoustic waves are released and this can be detected by the sensors. The detected waves were then evaluated according to their energy. The final result was then represented as acoustic emission energy as a function of indentation load. So now I will show you how we absorbed the damage. So basically after each test, we applied a red liquid dye penetrant on the surface to visualize the cracks. Then we observed the samples under a light microscope using normal light imaging and polarized light imaging. To observe the damage in the subsurface, the samples were cross-sectioned by means of grinding and polishing. And in cases where the grinding damaged the area of interest, we used the ion slicing technique. So let's start with the first results from equiaxed alumina. This is a representative diagram taken from one of the measurements. Here, the first signal is detected at about 850 newton. If we look at the surface under normal light imaging, we don't see any damage. But if we use the polarized imaging mode, we can actually see that a ring crack is formed. This shows the usefulness of acoustic emission testing for detecting initial cracking which might not be visible under a normal light microscope. Let's see what happens at higher loads. As you can see now, the ring crack becomes visible also in the normal imaging mode. In the polarized image, we can see the ring crack surrounded by halo-like reflection, which was found to be associated with the cone crack, as you can see from the cross-sectional view. So what we learned from equiaxed alumina is that events of ring and cone cracking are sources of high energy signals, exceeding in most cases 1000 energy units. So let's look at the results of textured alumina. At the beginning of the loading cycle, low energy signals are emitted. On the surface, we don't see any signs of damage, which suggests that the damage starts in the subsurface. If we further increase the load, we get a rapid release of low energy signals. On the surface, we see a different damage pattern where the damage is distributed along the contact area in the form of a surface depression. In the section view, there are traces of damage, which indicate that the damage occurred in response to subsurface shear stresses. Now, let's take a closer look at the damage. Here, you can see the surface of a sample loaded at 1500 Newton. In the 3D confocal image, the surface depression can clearly be seen, which looks similar to indentation damage in ductile materials such as metals. In the cross section, we see traces of damage, but because of the act of polishing, we only see grain pullouts. To see exactly what is happening, we ion slice the sample. As you can see, there are multiple cracks oriented horizontally along the textured grains, which clearly indicate that the damage occurred by an interfacial shear sliding mechanism. For comparison, here is an image of an, of an ion sliced pristine sample where we don't see any cracks. So now I will show you the results of layered alumina. At the beginning of the loading cycle, low energy signals are emitted, which is similar to what we observed in textured alumina. If we look at the surface, we don't see any signs of damage, which means that the damage started in the internal textured layer. At a higher load, a high energy signal is emitted, which corresponds to the formation of the ring and cone crack. So layered alumina shows both types of damage, starting by subsurface shear faulting in the internal textured layer, and followed by ring and cone crack formation at higher loads. So now let's see what happens beyond the ring crack initiation force. Here is a cross-sectional view of a sample loaded at 1500 Newton. Here we can see the subsurface damage in the internal textured layer. In the polarized light image, we can see the deflection of the cone crack at the textured layer. If we further increase the load, the subsurface damage intensifies. But what's interesting is that the cone crack remains limited in depth. This means that further damage is only absorbed by the internal textured layer. Here is an ion slicing image of the interface. 
where we can see the deflection of the cone crack along the weak basal grain boundaries of the textured grains. In the textured layer, we can see interfacial microcracking, which is responsible for absorbing the damage. So what have we achieved so far by the layered design? Let's compare Equiax alumina with layered alumina after applying a high load of 2000 Newton. In conventional polycrystalline alumina, the cone crack propagates under contact loading without any hindrance. Meanwhile, at the same load in the layered alumina, the cone crack remains limited in depth, and the damage is absorbed by the textured layer. This textured layer deflects surface cracks and arrests their propagation because of the combined action of compressive residual stresses and texture. We saw that compressive residual stresses are beneficial for shielding the cracks. However, these compressive residual stresses must be counterbalanced by tensile residual stresses, which are located on the surface in our design. We used a volume ratio of 1 to 5 between textured alumina and equiaxed alumina, which resulted, as mentioned earlier, in a 50 MPa tensile residual stress. So what's the effect of this tensile residual stress on damage initiation? What we did is that we took the ring crack initiation forces from our indentation tests to calculate the radial stresses that are responsible for damage initiation. So we basically converted ring crack initiation forces into ring crack initiation stresses using this equation from Hertzian theory. Here you can see a viable diagram of the results represented as probability of damage initiation against ring crack initiation stress. As we can see, equiaxed alumina can withstand higher stresses before damage initiation occurs. The difference in the characteristic stress is about 70 MPa, which is corresponds approximately to the tensile residual stress. This shows that indentation tests can be used as a tool to estimate residual stresses. And this also shows that it is important to reduce tensile residual stresses when designing ceramic laminates. So at this point, I would like to conclude my presentation. We saw that a textured microstructure changes the damage behavior from concentrated classical cone cracking to distributed subsurface microcracking, which can enhance damage tolerance. We also saw that layered alumina has shown the ability of deflecting cone cracks and thereby limiting their depth regardless of the applied load, and that further damage was then absorbed by the internal textured layer. So if you are interested in this work, you can read more about it in our paper, which was submitted in the Journal of the American Ceramic Society. So thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to take any questions.